I run my whole life out of a task manager. Now, I know that sounds like a bit much, a little over the top, but without one, I would forget to do tasks or miss important deadlines. See, I'm somebody with ADHD and without, you know, good organization and some kind of visual brain, and that's the way I think of a task manager is a visual brain, I'll miss important stuff. This video is sponsored by Scrintle. Let's get into it. The task manager I use is Things. It has a great native iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS app. It has a good system for structure, beautiful design, and a solid amount of shortcut actions. That's important. I'm gonna try and keep this video very high level, so in reality, any task manager should be able to follow this kind of organization system. But there are going to be a few things that are specific to things in this video. Now, to me, a task manager is better than a calendar because you have to go in and check something off. And that going in and physically checking something off is, is saying that you did this, you completed this. With a calendar, you can just ignore it and when that time slot is done, it goes away. At the core of my setup, there are two pillars and I think this will reflect anyone really. I have my personal life and I have my work life and I like to keep these separate. They should never ever cross the streams. You know, the Ghostbusters taught us, don't ever cross the streams. So in things, what you can do is you can create these areas and areas are basically ways to organize projects and even like loose tasks. So I have a personal area and a work area and a couple others, but we'll get to those later. I just wanna focus on personal and work right now. In my personal area, I have projects for stuff like paying bills, grocery shopping and house projects. I also have reoccurring tasks like watering plants, ordering meds, and the newest one is work out because if I do not have a task in my task manager, it won't get done. Reoccurring tasks are extremely important to me. Now, things has this annoying issue where you can't check off a reoccurring task before it's due. A lot of people have complained about this, for me, it's not the end of the world. I rarely do a reoccurring task before it's due. Now, I have a couple of reoccurring tasks on Sundays. One is about reviewing my upcoming week. I got this from the book, Getting Things Done. What I do is I sit down and I plan out my days and I see what is already on my task manager, see if there's anything missing that I need to fill out and kind of balance out my week. Oftentimes, if I postpone something, like I just not enough time in the day to get to it, I push it to the following Monday. And this has uh, caused a couple of issues. And if I don't do a review, what will end up happening is I'll have double digits amount of tasks due for that day. And it's just, it's just impossible to get it all done. So I use a review to kind of help balance out my week and make sure I, you know, if there's anything loose or maybe I need to order something for an, a project or a task or something, I can get it all done then. The other task is what I call reset day. I use this to remind myself to reset my life for the new week. It's kind of like starting over in a video game. I use this for things like cleaning the house, washing the car, pick up my office, do dishes, wash clothes, make sure all my devices are charged up. Now, this is stuff I normally do throughout the week. Like I don't just clean the house on one day a week. I'm a pretty clean person. But sometimes I can get busy and I just, you know, I, I push things off and I just like, okay, I can't get to this today. I'll get to it tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes the next day and then the next day and then the next day. So what I use this for is a deadline. Hey, it's Sunday. You need to clean the house. You have to have the house clean by Sunday. You have to have all your laundry done by Sunday. You have to have the dishes done by Sunday. You need to wash the car by Sunday. So that's what I kind of use this for as, as a deadline to make sure this stuff does get done, not so much as a reminder to do it because I know I need to do laundry throughout the week. In projects like grocery shopping, I've set up headings to break things up into different stores that I get items from. This way I can kind of be more efficient when I go grocery shopping. I can be like, hey, this is the thing I need from Save Mart. This is what I need from Costco. This is what I need from Target. I also use emojis for projects and areas to quickly identify what they are. Now, I know this doesn't sound like a massive deal, but it's super helpful in quickly identifying what something is. And it kind of just makes different tasks and stuff stand out. Uh, with things, it's a beautifully designed app, but if you just had a bunch of text in there, it'll all just run together when you quickly look at it. This video is sponsored by Scrintle. Scrintle is a visual knowledge management tool. It is a card-based note-taking system. 
you can add new notes to your board in a card layout. In your note, you can add text, images, links, files, and more. You can link different cards together by using a backlinking system. Hit the plus button and type the name of the card you want to link to. There is a visual connection on your board along with a backlink in the note. The My Desk view is your main starting point. From here, you can build out your stack of notes. You can also create multiple boards as well. I created some that organize video projects and sponsorships. In here, I am able to lay out my projects based on the state they are in. Then I can just drag and drop them around and to put them in the proper place. I use text labels to build a system around this, but there is also support for columns as well. Scrintinal uses tags to organize notes. Just type the pound sign and write your tag. You can also select that tag and see all the other notes with the related tag as well. Scrintinal is a super interesting app, and as a visual person, this really speaks to me. For the next four weeks, you can check the publication date in, in the description below, but for four weeks after this video is published, if you use the link in the description below and code lolly 10 at checkout, you can get 10% off a Scrutinal membership. My thanks to Scrutinal for sponsoring this video. For the work stuff, I have multiple areas, but for right now, let's just focus on the work area. In this main work area, I have one-off tasks like getting caught up on email, fixing my YouTube playlist, and returning review units. From there, I break stuff into projects. Anything that is me making something that is multiple steps becomes a project. The four I have here are long-term projects that I'm working on, but I'll get to them when I have time. They're not something I set a specific amount of time aside a week to do. None of them are related to videos or anything that is currently a part of my business. This is just stuff I want to do at some point in the future. I also have a project for sponsorships, and I use headings again here to break these up into potential, active, and completed categories. This way I can just quickly glance at the sponsorship project and see what still needs work. Video projects get three separate areas. Now this is due to the fact that areas can't have headings inside them, which is a big bummer. The first area is called video projects. This is where all of my active full length videos go. Only projects I'm actively working on, meaning script writing through the posting stage can go here. The second area is shorts. I've been playing around with some different short form content, but honestly, I kind of hate shorts and I kind of hate making them, but I also know evolving and not changing with the time is a bad idea. So I'm trying to balance that out. Right now I have some ideas for some apps that I think would make good coverage for in shorts. Uh, and I'm going to work on those over the summer. The last area is ideas. When I come up with a concept for a video, the idea goes here. I use the notes section of the project to write a little summary of what I was thinking at the time. Now, often this summary evolves or changes into something completely different, but it's nice to have that starting off point, especially if I had this idea a couple months ago and I'm just now able to get to it. When I'm ready to work on an idea, I drag the project from the ideas area to the video projects area. I also have a shortcut that I use to build out these projects and add them into things. Now this will build out the entire video project and will add all the steps for that project as tasks. This way everything is consistent. I am a big believer if you do something multiple times, automate it. Even if it takes you a lot of time to learn how to automate it, that skill will transfer over, but also that time you will save will eventually add up. So this is something that would be really annoying to create by hand every single time, but with automation, I can just knock it out in seconds. One thing that Things does a really good job of that I don't see any other task manager doing is giving you the ability to set a start date and a due date. So I do this with video projects because they take multiple days. So I'll set a start date and a due date. Outside of the project view, there is a couple of smart views. I use the inbox for quickly dumping tasks. If I'm out and about or I just don't have the time to properly fill out the info, it just goes here. If I just, when I, you need to get something out of your head, the inbox is perfect for that. Today is the view I use most often. This shows everything that is due today, wild. Upcoming shows you everything that is upcoming. I use this view on Sundays when I sit down and plan out my week, but also I just use it throughout the week whenever I just like, hey, what's coming up next? 
Someday is where tasks go that I don't have due dates for, but want to get them done at some point. I do have a bad habit of adding things to the someday view and then never doing them. What I've done to kind of alleviate that is when I sit down to do my weekly review, I have to pull one task out of someday and I either have to delete it or I have to get it done that week. So it kind of helps cut down on those tasks and I've actually been slowly catching up on this view. Anytime is for tasks and projects that don't have some date assigned to them or aren't already in someday. I don't use this because of the way I handle like idea video projects and the shorts. It just, it, it's kind of become a mess for me. Uh, the only time I really have like an individual task without a date in my task manager is when it's in the inbox. And in the inbox to me, that basically means like, hey, I'm got this big old red flag. I need more info assigned to me. And once I assign that info, it gets a date or gets put into someday. So I, I just don't really worry about this view. Like I mentioned, Things has great automation support through the Shortcuts app. In fact, a while ago, Things was updated with even better Shortcuts support. It's honestly one of the best third-party apps out there for building Shortcuts against. When Things overhauled their shortcut support, I overhauled a few of the shortcuts I use with Things. One of them is my task cut shortcut. Before this would just ask for the name of a task and then add it to the inbox. Now it uses the quick entry action. This way I can add in all of the data if I want upon entering a task. If not, I can just drop it into the inbox. But it takes it a step further as well. This looks to see if there is a Safari page open. And if there is, it will take the link for that page, format it into Markdown, and then add it into the Notes section because Things supports Markdown in the Notes section. I also have a shortcut for creating a task for when I'm doing laundry. My machine is on the opposite side of the house and I don't hear it at all anymore as opposed to my old place where it used to be right outside of my office. This will create a task and will add either 60 or 90 minute timer depending on what kind of laundry I am doing. I told you, I run my whole life out of a task manager. It's no exaggeration from laundry to making sure my taxes are paid. And then the last shortcut I'll, I want to talk about is my shopping list shortcut, which is one I've mentioned a bit in the past, but it's just such a handy one to have. Because of the way this works, I can enter in multiple items and all I need to do is make sure each item is on its new line. From there, it will go through and add each item into my shopping list project. This is great for when you're going through your kitchen and you're like, okay, what do I need from the store? Now I should update this with proper heading support. I just haven't gotten around to it just yet. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you got some tips on how to organize your life with a task manager. My thanks to Scrintle for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.